Thank you for joining us here at the Pentecostals for this week's message. Our desire is to make a difference by loving God, creating community, growing in truth, and serving our world. If God has blessed you through this ministry, we want to encourage you to share it with someone and even consider partnering with us to help POR continue delivering God's Word all around the world. Check out our website, porva.org, to discover more about us and our ministries. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope you enjoyed today's message. Esther 4.13, Mordecai has sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, because uh, palace you will escape when all other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows that perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go and gather together all the Jews of Susan and fast from me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will go do the same. And then, uh, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king if I die, I must die. So Mordecai went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Amen. I want to preach to you this morning, unwavering determination. Unwavering determination. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your precious people. God, I thank you for your rich presence that's in this place today. Help me to share what you've given me to this precious people in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Would you shake someone's hand as you're being seated? Tell them you're glad to see them in church today. The law said anyone who appeared before the Persian monarch without being summoned by the king was liable to death. The need was so great, it was so important, that she said, if it costs me my life, then I am going to do what I need to do. Yeah. Esther had not been summoned, but she was going to see the king anyway. Possibly she felt like she was walking to her death. No doubt she thought, I, I will die anyway at his hand, so what do I have to lose? My people and I have no other way to escape. And her determination to see the king and save her and her people was, was so strong. She was so determined, I want to live, I want my people to live, that I'm willing to risk everything to make sure that this happens. In Acts the 20th chapter, Apostle Paul traveling through Macedonia and Greece, teaching and preaching with much opposition. We see him in Troas, where he preached until midnight and a man went to sleep and died. But Paul prayed for him and he lived again. But Paul was not stopping there. He was determined to complete God's will. Acts 20, I'm setting you up today for the word. Acts 20 and 24, and now I am bound by the spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me except that the Holy Spirit tells me city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. There was something inside of him that knew that persecution was ahead, that he knew that he was walking toward jail and imprisonment and, and some difficult days, but he was so determined, he made up his mind, I'm going to do the will of God. I'm going to accomplish my purpose for being here on earth. It doesn't matter what I face. He said, verse 24, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing and work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. Since when? When did we start living for him? When did we start, instead of pleasing my flesh, what can I do for my flesh? What can I do for my, my, my own self? Did we start saying, God, I'm going to live determined to accomplish your will. I want your purpose in my life. 
but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it. Verse 24, for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Could there be a fresh fire, a fresh anointing that would hit us today to realize that our purpose is here to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's more than enduring. It's more than enjoying. It's more than the next vac vacation. It's more than the next what we can buy. It's about what can I do to fulfill my purpose and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with somebody else. <laughs> Webster defines determination as to reach a decision <clears throat> about something, to decide upon after investigation and thought. How many of you have investigated this gospel of Jesus Christ? How many of you have thought about this thing for a long time? I've decided as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It says to have one's mind made up, to resolve, to become unwavering. There's that word, unwavering about one's belief, attitudes, and action. You know, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. That means he's unstable in his marriage, unstable in his job, unstable in his decisions. We become unstable with God. We can't have a double mind. We've got to make up our mind. I am determined that this is who I am and what I'm going to be. This is the road I'm going to travel. Desire without anything, without any purpose, without any discipline, without the word of God, without structure produces frustration. Desire is to, supposed to produce desperation. Desire is something that it consumes us. I am consumed with desire. I am determined that I'm going to make something out of myself. I am determined to follow Jesus. There's a deep burning desire inside of us that says, I am going to do what's right. I know there's many roads I can travel. I know there's many things pulling me, but I have a desire and I have a determination. Desperation helps people act up. Desperation helps us to get out of our comfort zone. We all have comfort zones. But desperation says, hey, I'm getting up earlier today because I've got to have time with God. I'm desperate for a relationship with him. I, my, my, my flesh says this, but there's a desire inside of me that's drawing me to a place of prayer, a time of devotion with God. Desperation can even leave us frustrated at times. But we've got to have desire, desperation, and then what is it? Determination. Desperation is one thing, but determination says, I'm going to keep this, this schedule. I'm going to stay on this mark. And so once you have determination, you can experience deliverance. You can experience healing. You can experience miracles. You can experience signs and wonders in your life. You don't need another feeling. You just need to grab what you have and what you know and say, God, if you'll help me, this is what I'm going to do. Nothing good is in me. It's all in you. I can't do it, but you can work it through me. I'm determined that I'm going to change. I'm determined that I'm going to make something happen. I'm determined that, that I'm not going to be labeled by those that have come before me that have fallen and that have made a fool out of themselves. I am determined that I am going to make this thing happen. I'm going to walk through the gates of hell. I'm going to snatch somebody out of there. My life is going to count. I'm not going to just be a rollover on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night or whenever it is. I'm not going to be that, 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 uh, that, that uh, limp-wristed, uh, spineless person that just does whatever the wind blows. I'm going to count for your kingdom. 2 Samuel 21, 1. There was a famine during David's reign that lasted three years. So David asked the Lord about it, and the Lord said, The famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murdering the Gibeonites. The men of Gibeon executed them on the mountain before the Lord, so all seven of them died together at the beginning of the barley harvest. Verse 10. Then Rizpah, 
daughter of Ai, the mother of two of the men, spread burlap on a rock and stayed there the entire harvest season. She prevented the scavenger birds from tearing at their bodies during the day, and she stopped the wild animals from eating them at night. Consider Rizba. Rizba was Saul's mistress. She had two of Saul's sons. They killed her sons, but she was so determined that the fowls would not eat her children and that her sons were already dead. But she said, I'm determined to guard them even though they have departed from me. I love them so much. I'm not going to let anything happen to their bodies. I'm going to stand guard. I want to ask somebody, what about your living sons? What about your living daughters? You still have time to do a work in their life. You still have time to change their destiny. They may not be past. It's one thing to honor them while they're gone. It's one thing to change flowers on the grave, but it's another thing while they're living to say, I'm going to reach my boy. My boy is not going to be a drug addict. My boy is not going to run the streets. My daughter is not going to be this or that. I'm going to stand for them. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to fast for them. I'm going to stand in the gap for them. I'm going to be an example for them. I'm determined that my family will be saved. I can see Rizba beating away the birds to come to eat on their flesh. Determined to preserve what God had given to her. What was out of her control, she couldn't control. But what was in her control, she said, I'm going to be determined. She wasn't going to let the predators to take the remains. She, she remained there until the king took notice. Oh, there's something about standing when it's not easy to stand and fighting when it seems like nobody else is fighting for righteousness. But with determination like that, you can get the king's attention. When you said, hey man, I'm going to weep, I'm going to pray, I'm going to fast, I'm going to do what I can do. I promise you, you'll get the king's attention. Most men, anonymously written here, most men fail not because of lack of education, nor ability, nor lack of opportunity or desire, but for the lack of determination. Life is more than playing on a tablet. Life is more than playing games. Life is more than just existing. Life is more than just enjoyment and entertainment. But we have a stronger purpose. God called us for this hour and for this time, and I have showed up. What a great army this is, the army of the living God. But we have been endued with power from on high to accomplish the mission he sent us to do. Napoleon said the truest wisdom in all the world is resolute determination. Amen. If you're determined, there is no devil that can take you down. If you're determined, you're going to get back up when you got knocked down. If you're determined, you're going to overcome that obstacle and whatever it is that's hindering you and blocking you. No situation can take you out. Nothing can defeat you. Amen. Somebody say, I'm more than a conqueror. It's impossible to defeat the person who refuses to quit. Babe Ruth said that. It's impossible to defeat a person who refuses to quit. You ever known somebody that just, they kept getting knocked down and they were in the worst abusive situations or, or un, uh, 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 unbelievable circumstances, but they pop back up and here you see them five years later and they're winning? You can't win. You can't lose if you keep winning. If you get back up again and you say, God is for me, I can do this thing. You said you would not allow more on me than I could bear. You said you would make a way of escape from me. I hold you to the word. It's dark in here. The storm is coming. Amen. Tornadoes are blowing. Amen. Hurricanes are blowing. But I'm standing on the word of God. I'm determined. Yes. Amen. Hell says... I can't defeat the person that's determined. I can't defeat them. Amen. We sometimes say, well, I give it my best shot. I got knocked down, but I'm tired. I can't get back up. Turn to somebody and say, get back up again. 
you may be bloody nosed, black eyed, amen, but I'm ready to get back in the ring. I don't look pretty, my hair's messed up, my clothes are torn, but I'm determined, you hear me? I'm determined, I'm not gonna be a loser, I'm not gonna be a failure, I'm not gonna lose eternity, I'm not gonna lose my soul, I'm not gonna lose in the battle, I've got a calling on my life, I've got a mission to accomplish. Oh, don't look at me now. Don't rejoice against me, oh, my enemies. I'm kind of down right now, but I'm still determined. I've got some broken bones right now, but I'm still determined. I'm kind of disheveled right now, but I'm coming out of this thing. I'm coming out of this thing. The devil gave his best shot. I'm bruised. I'm beaten. I'm hurting. But you hear me? I'm not giving up. I am determined to see Jesus. Oh, I wish somebody would praise him right now. Amen. Maybe you've been praying for healing for a long time. Maybe there's an uh, unspoken request that goes to the heart of your being. And you said, I've been praying it. Don't stop praying it. Don't stop believing. Continue to fight and believe God. Amen. Tell somebody to pray one more time. Failure can be a stepping stone to success. Those of us that are fortunate enough to have family and brothers and sisters in the Lord that love us when we're not lovable, encourage us when we're not really encourageable. God has placed us in our natural, blended, adopted, or extended families so that it can be stronger in him. What a great community the church is. People that say, well, I, I, my, my boy don't have a daddy, or, or my girl don't have a daddy, or this is missing in their life, and that's missing in their life. I tell them, oh, what a family we have here. What a great family. <clears throat> Maybe 750 or so that are part of the family. You've got a family. You've got somebody that's going to step in, somebody that's going to step up. We're going to carry you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to mentor you. We're going to help you. We're going to encourage you. Why? We're determined to make a difference and be there for one another. <clears throat> Acts 15, John Mark was a young man who experienced a humiliating failure early in his ministry. He left for the mission field with Paul and company and he failed to finish his task. Actually, he had two very strong failures. Evidently, when he was going through difficult times and it was tough. He quit and he went back home. Later, he would tell the Romans that God, Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, God's gracious gifts and calling are irrevocable. For quite some time, Paul it was kind of upset with him. And Paul didn't want anything to do with the betrayer. You see, somebody that's a betrayer, a few people will give them a second chance. And there was other things that were happening in his life. But there came a time when Paul, a man, was up to the plate, he said, I, I'm going to give him a second chance. And fortunately for John Mark, he had a faithful relative who did not give up on him when he stumbled. It was Barnabas, a man well known for his ability to con uh, console and to encourage. And he refused to allow his nephew to remain as a casualty in the past. I wonder how many people we could change if we would reach out and encourage them. I wonder how many people would get back up again if we would stand in the gap and say, God, speak to me the words to tell them because they are not failing. I was once like them for such was some of you, but I got back up. Why? Because somebody reached out to me. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody encouraged me. <laughs> Together, Barnabas, John Mark were used by God to multiply, to use, they were used by God in missions and to do great things for the Lord. We've got to take things serious. I won't let defeat defeat me. I won't let what somebody said about me or said to me. I won't let that offended spirit get on me. I won't allow somebody else to bring me down. I won't allow someone that's going nowhere to stop me from going somewhere. 
Amen. I'll not let my wounds and my hurts defeat me. We're going to talk more about wounds and hurts tonight and how to make sure that we heal right and how we allow God to heal those wounds. In our lives, we're faced with much negativity. We're faced with a lot of struggles. We deal with a lot of problems. But we've got to understand that we get strength from our struggle. We get strength from our struggle. Sometimes we think it's going to kill me. No, it's driving those roots deeper. You say, I can't bear it anymore. You can because God is with you. But it's making you a person of integrity. It's making you a person of character. Amen. What is it setting you up for? To advance from your adversary. To advance to another level. You've heard it. In every level, there's another devil. So when that devil is through, when he's conquered there, it means I'm going to another level. What you meant, oh, what you meant bad for me, I'm just going to be elevated to another level. It was a bad battle. You tried to take me out. I've seen some of the worst stuff I've ever seen, dealt with some of the strongest stuff I've ever seen. But all that did... It's made me stronger. Now God is going to promote me. He can trust me more. Oh, I hope you're feeling what I'm feeling. Amen. And we're faced with a lot of negativity. That's an, there's an onslaught of negativity in our world. There's an onslaught to destroy every person's character. Doesn't matter who you are, if you're successful or if you're amounting to anything, if you're climbing, there's somebody and just the spirit of the world that's out to slaughter you, mow you down, take away any credentials you've got, any credibility you've got. Because if you're succeeding and they're not, they're going to pull you down to make you like they are. All the wimps will just drift to nowhere's a bill. Those that won't fight. God has given us the armor. He's given us strength. He's equipped us well. He said, and when he says it, it's big stuff. There's no weapon formed against you that will prosper when you come in my name. I have armed you to the hilt. There's nobody like me. There's nobody got power like me. Lord, I just wish you'd change some, pray, the circumstances in my family. Lord, would you please change the circumstances on my job or, or wherever I am in my neighborhood. My, and, 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 and he doesn't many times. Amen. He says, you don't need your circumstance changed. He says, there's things that I allow to help build. Here I am back to this character thing. There's things that I allow to help you build your own prayer altar. That, that you can do good for evil in the presence of evil and people that, 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 are, that are just making fun of you or whatever. But I'm giving you something in the middle of that storm that's going to change them because they know what they're doing. They know what they're about. But it's a person that walks with God. Amen. Amen. God will handle those that you can't handle. Amen. There was a woman that for many years my dad pastored. He told this story. Her husband was I, I'm not it was, a, it, was, it was another day. It was a long time ago. But I remember as a little child I remember hearing, hearing dad tell this story. This man was a mean man. He was just mean. Uh, when he would bring her to church, he would, he would make sure and squeal out and spin the rocks and the gravels and throw it just to make a scene when he did come to church, when he brought her to church. But the story was horrific, but she, she would not leave him. He didn't believe that she could leave him. And I remember Dad talking to her, or telling the story about talking to her. He said, When you get to the day that you can't take it anymore, tell me. So this service on a Sunday, she came to pastor, my dad. He said, I've had it. It's been years. I can't take it anymore. I'm I'm about to tell you something extreme, so just put your seatbelt on. He 
said, okay. He began to pray. The next day, I believe it was the very next day, they found him with a heart attack. His life left him. I don't, I don't know. Here's what I know, that God will fight our battles for us. If we will allow him to take control, if we'll allow him in our life. Oh, we don't know. I believe there's coming a day shortly when God's going to show up and show off. People that have said he doesn't exist and they've changed his laws and changed his word and watered everything down. I will tell you, there's a day that God's going to bring fear back to America, fear back to our world fear of him. So what did Moses do? What did he do? Adam and Eve had the best and, and they messed it all up. God gave them the very best. And, 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 and there are times that we don't need a change of circumstances. We need a change of mindset. We, 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 we need a, a change of our level of determination. Instead of allowing that defeatism mentality uh, to saturate our beings, we we get to focus on the problem instead of the problem solver. Instead of saying, I can't take this anymore, I know you've got this, God. It's in your hands. You're going to give me strength today. I can't fix it. I can't change their attitude. I can't change people around me. But you're going to build a hedge about me. You're going to make a way of escape. Amen. I'm going to come through this. Tell somebody you're going to come through it. Amen. What did Moses do time after time? He, he approached Pharaoh saying, you're going to let my people go. Strong faith, believe in God. Pharaoh kept saying, no. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Amen. Moses was tenacious. He was determined. You've got to be determined. Amen. Moses was determined. He didn't quit. Turn to somebody and say, don't quit. You've got to say, get your hand off my body, devil. Get your hand off my finances, devil. Get your hand off my life, devil. Get your hand off my family, devil. I'm not quitting. If you think this is going to get me down, what the doctor said, you're a liar, liar, pants on fire. If you think I'm going to quit, you're a liar. I'm not quitting. If you think I'm throwing in the towel, I'm not throwing in the towel. I may be dragging through this storm. I may only be making it through this storm. But I tell you, if I can crawl, I'm going to make it. If I get to where I can't crawl, he's going to send an angel and pick me up. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I know my health may be weak. I know my family may be divided. I know my finances are in trouble, but I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm standing in the gap. My trust is in you. I am determined. I've seen this one fail. I've seen that one fall. I've seen that marriage break up. I've seen that person die. But you hear me. I'm standing on the word of God. Nothing will separate me. From your promises, God. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord? Clap your hands unto the Lord. Every now and then, the devil waves this, this flag in front of you. That cancer's in your family. That cancer's in your family. You're going to be next. You're going to be next. He starts flagging this. You're about to lose everything. You're going to lose your family. You're going to shut up, devil. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come with the blood of Jesus covering me. I come with the authority of the word of God. I stand on the promises of God. Amen. Determination comes from knowing whose you are. And the power that comes with that. Oh, you may be 90 pounds soaking wet, but you are a powerhouse. There is nothing that can come against you. If you only knew what God invested in you, if you only knew the authority he put in you, if he only knew what, if you only knew what he would do through you, if you would begin to exercise the gifts and stand in the word and begin to proclaim his promises. Amen, amen, amen. I will take the challenge because of God before me. I'll take the challenge. It's not always the easy road. 
Anybody that amounts to anything is going to have a, a lot of opposition. Anybody that accomplishes anything is going to go uphill a lot of times. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a big mountain I'm climbing. I, I see people that are down there having fun down there, all this party and all that stuff, and here I am in a climb. Why have you got me in this climb, God? Because when you get to the top, you won't believe what's at the top. If you can just get to the top, amen. Some days we get up and we, we lose about 50 feet and we say, how did I get back down here? It's because you started looking at others. You started looking at what the devil had, had begun enticing you with. But you get a hold and say, oh, I may have lost some ground yesterday, but here I go because I'm going to reach the top of that mountain. I'm going to be what you called me to be. I'm going to do what you called me to do. God's never left you. He's never forsaken you. He's not going to forsake you. Amen. He'll not, I said it before, but I want you to hear it, put more on you than you can bear. Don't li- can, can bear. Don't listen to the liar. Amen. The enemy tries to tell you you can't take it. He's always made a way of escape. Here's our problem. We turn to the flesh. We turn to escapism. When we get to a certain point, we, we turn to our old vices. Hey, if somebody got a cigarette, I, 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 I just need a joint. Just, I, I'm not going back. I just need a joint. I just need. I, I, anybody got a bottle? I, I, I can't be seen going in there. Would you go in there and get it for me? Because I just can't take this anymore. That's not going to fix the problem. So God allows the turbulence to stay until finally we say, okay. Hey, I trust you, God. <laughs> Determination will work when other people's, when other people's uh, opinions try to sabotage your determination. Uh, don't get weird on me. Uh, you're, you're, you're determined, but, but you know, you just got to use some common sense. There are faith thieves, people that will steal your faith. But you need more determination if you want more of his power, if you want more of his glory, if you want more of the gifts of the Spirit, then get determined to go after them. Why? Because I am living under my privilege. God created me to be something and to do great exploits. He created me, amen, to be a conqueror, to be an overcomer. And here I am. You think I'm going to sit back and get me a lawn chair and an ROC cola and a moon pie and just let let world, the world go by. No, sir, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and be what he called me to be. You're determined to get back what you lost. Don't just say thief where you can go because a thief that's not caught and punished, he's going to steal again. I'm going to put you on notice. You mess with my family, I'm going to send you back to Hades where you came from. <laughs> Amen. Amen. For Samuel 30, David lost everything. He wasn't big enough and bad enough to get his stuff back, but he was determined. Turn to somebody and say, are you determined? Amen. Somebody needs to shout, I want my stuff back. Here you are, amen, impoverished and this taken and that taken and that taken and somebody else got the promotion and you should have got this and this should have happened and that should have happened and we sit back and cry and we say, there's nothing I can do. Oh, yes, there is. You need to say today, I'm taking my stuff back. I want my family back, amen. I want my peace back. I want my health back. I want my finances back in order. All David needed to go after his stuff that had been stolen was direction and permission. We've got to know how to pray. We've got to know what to pray. We've got to know what to say. We've got to know when to stay. We've got to know when to move forward. God simply said, pursue and you shall recover. Pursue, start to bring my wallet out and show you something that I carry every day of my, my life. I, I'm going to carry it not only in my mind, it's not only in my heart, but it's in my wallet. What is it? It's the promises of God. No matter what you say, you say, you say, you say, you say. Boy, it get tricky. He said. So I'm carrying his word to constantly remind him I'm not letting go. 
I come to collect my stuff. I come to collect. I'm standing on the word. No matter what circumstances say, no matter what the evidence is, I'm standing on the promises and my faith is not tarnished. Get to hurry here. David lost. Amen. But God said, pursue and you shall recover. I'm prophesying to somebody in this building today, pursue and you shall recover. Amen. Amen. We're not these little sissies that says, give me, give me my stuff back. I want my stuff back. I'm tired of being, okay. I'm tired. No. Sorry, rascal. I'm going to knock your lights out. Give me my stuff back. Amen. That little sissy going to just go around, well, I love my stuff. No, you don't. You want to think a time or two if you come into my house. I'm going to hurt somebody. I got a few guns in my house. I got a few cameras around inside and outside my house. I hurt somebody right there. I will hurt somebody. Amen. It's just a warning. I will. Have you ever seen a criminal dance? I will make a criminal dance. A little higher. What are you saying? I'm serious. Getting my stuff. I come to claim what God has promised us. Somebody needs to get bold and say, oh, no, no, no. You've been down our family line. That lust thing has been flowing down our family line. That cancer thing's been flowing down our family line. That division, all of that stuff. Uh -uh, Uh-uh, uh-uh, not on my watch. Amen. Amen. When you're going to pursue, you're going to have to get over your personal feelings and personal agendas. Well, sometimes it gets rough. It gets rough. Because the enemy has, has built, he come in your house, he said, oh, uh-uh, 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 it's not your house, this is mine now. I've been here so long. You're the one that's going to leave. I own this place. What do you mean you're going to come and anoint this place? What do you mean you come to take dominion? Uh-uh. I've been here a long time. I've been in your life. I've been messing with you. You've been doing what I've demanded you to do. And all of a sudden you come in and say, uh-uh, you got to leave. It's going to, you get ready for a fight. It's going to be a fight. But you are determined to take it all back. Amen. Got to get sick and tired of the devil stealing our stuff. Jacob became Israel. Because of determination. The Bible doesn't say Jacob wrestled with the angel. The Bible says the angel wrestled with Jacob. Now, why is that? There was something in Jacob that he had to stop. He was trying to kill the one thing in Jacob that resisted God. Sometimes there's things in us that's resisting God. We get so far but don't understand. It's God that's got to take it out of us. Amen. Till you let God touch that one thing in your life that's fighting against his will, we're never going to get what, what we want. The flesh is weak, the spirit is strong, but then there's something that we have established a stronghold. Or the enemy has established a stronghold, and we've got to allow God to do it his way. The way up many times is down. Amen. The reason we don't get our answers, the reason we don't conquer is many times is because we stop when the pain starts. We've heard it. No pain, no. Right? Ah, ah, ah. Can't fast. <laughs> Amen. 
He wrestled in his pain until finally he wasn't fighting anymore. He was clinging and holding on to the angel. There comes a time when there's a breaking. There's a, the anointing breaks the yoke. There's a time that in the presence of God when we have surrendered to him and we wept before him and we built an altar before him that all of a sudden all of that stuff that's held us and all of that stuff that's kept us in bondage, that determination, I'm not leaving until you bless me. I'm not leaving until I'm delivered. I'm not leaving until I get my stuff back. Oh, hallelujah. Discouragement, yes, sir. Depression, yes, sir. All that stuff hanging on. I'm not leaving. God, I haven't got victory yet. Okay, well, I'm not stopping until I get victory. Amen. Sometimes it's called frustrated faith. Frustrated. How long? However long it takes. Amen. The Bible says the sinew in his legs shrank. The bad part of Jacob got smaller. The good part of him got bigger. I want to be filled with God's spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Not just the little gravel, but I just want him to pour it out. Just pour it. Pour it in me. I want to be filled. Amen. I want to be possessed by the presence of God. Amen. 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 Music come, please. We've got a lot of pressure. This is a pressure time. We're living in a pressure cooking, crooked, pressure cooked and crooked world. Amen. Amen. But we want the thing that has held us and kept us at bay and held us hostage. God wants to shrink that thing up. Amen. Take that thing away. Most of the time, God leaves a little portion of it or at least a scar to remind us of what he did in our lives. To remind us of where we've been. Anybody ever been healed and you forgot you were ever sick? Sure. Sure. He's done things for us. And we go, oh, man, I, I, I wish I could remember everything he'd done for us. He wants you to remember because that builds faith for today. Deliverance. I'm closing. Deliverance comes from determination. The devil won't give up until he has to. Until there's something inside of you that's unwavering determination. Unwavering. Because every day that he stays, he's trying to put one more brick in that, in that, in that prison. One more brick. Lay in one more brick. Because he plans on permanently winning the race. But it's going to take a dad, it's going to take a mom, it's going to take a young man or young woman that says, I'm not staying in this prison. I'm determined to serve God. I'm determined to get back what's been taken. Would you stand? Taken from me. All the faith that's needed is a mustard size. If you're determined, don't don't miss this. If you're determined, you can get your miracle today. Our ministry is coming. No devil has the power to take you out. If you're determined to live for God, no matter what. I wish somebody would be praying right now. No devil can take you out if you're determined to live for God. When Paul said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God, it wasn't just a statement it was something that was deep on the inside of him there is a determination I've been through the valley I've been through the storm I've been in every situation but I am determined there's been many roads I could go down and many things enticing me but I'm determined to serve the Lord the story of the potter clay in a picture picture something about determination God you made me but it's other things that I've picked up in life that I want you to cleanse me I'm willing to be put back on the wheel and you take off the things that you need to take off would you lift your hands today on behalf of Pastor Joe Forbush and the Pentecostals of Richmond thanks again for spending time with us today God bless you